looking up ahead, I think in people's awareness of UFOs. And our guest tonight is, uh, I'm very honored, we're all very honored to have him on tonight because uh, he's actually been researching this subject for quite some time, um, in particular in regards to the Pine Bush, New York hotspot. Pine Bush, as you may know, was originally made famous, I think, back in the 1980s through uh, M Philip and Brogno's book, Night Siege, and probably more in particular, Ellen Crystal's book, um, which the title is escaping me now, but uh, it was about her investigations into silent invasion, that's what it was called, about her investigations into Pine Bush, which is one of New York State's major UFO hotspots. And our guest tonight, his name is Phil Koseski, has actually visited this area many times and had some encounters of himself, for himself. So uh, we're going to be having, hearing some interesting stories tonight. And uh, I am very happy to welcome our guest, Phil Koseski. Phil, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Hi, Preston. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very interested, in, of course, in New York State Encounters because I actually wrote a book, UFOs Over New York, recently. And I'm very <laughs> aware of the whole pine bush phenomenon. So I'm really excited to hear about your experiences in that regard. But before you get into it, can, how did you get involved in this whole subject? Um, you know all, what I mean? Were you, were you sure. skeptical of UFOs? You know, I was skeptical coming in, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. Mm, I, I've never really been skeptical because way, way back in 1984, I saw something out in Nevada when I was out working at a gold mine. And I saw something that was out near the town of Paw Range. It was out near, I guess, Area 51. But I saw something out there when I was camped out on a hill. But anyway, what, what, besides what, that, what, yeah, what, I, I, I never, I always believed in extraterrestrial life. What did you uh, call the Tonopah? Tonopah Range? Yeah. The hill range, yeah. I saw yeah. something out there, and it absolutely convinced me that uh, UFOs are real because this thing just, whatever it was, it was some kind of a disc, and it it was just stopped in midair over me, and it was just bobbing up and down like a yo-yo on a string. And wow. I was shocked <laughs> when I saw that, and I just this knew from the then on. Pardon me? This was during the day? No, it was at nighttime. Okay. I was camped out on a hill out there, and I was just looking at the stars, and I saw this object that looked kind of uh, saucer-shaped, and it was very high up. But you could make out some kind of a saucer shape to it, and when it came right over me, it stopped all of a sudden, and I thought that was unusual because I just thought it was some kind of maybe an airplane or a star or something, or like some kind of uh, military object or something, but it stopped. And then it just started bobbing like a yo-yo. Anyway, ever since that time, I always believed in UFOs, and I always thought it was, I never really paid it too much attention after that. That was way back in 1984. And then 1992, um, 93 came around, and that's when I really became awakened to the whole idea of UFOs, I mean, the whole understanding of UFOs and contacts and all these kinds of things. And I read a book of course, uh, to familiarize me about uh, these sightings in New York. And that book I think you had just mentioned by Ellen Crystal. Right, right. Yeah, and Silent Invasion. I read that book. I became uh, incredibly convinced about her sightings. And so a friend and I decided to take a trip out there back in 1993 in July. And... This was my first trip out to New York, out that area, and um, we started seeing things in the sky, and we started seeing lights that were behaving unorthodox, unconventionally, and one light in particular just uh, suddenly appeared over some farm fields. And this light was very low. It was only not more than 100 feet above the ground. And it was it was pulsating on and off, on and off, on and off. And it, it just, it just kind of hung there and pulsated uh, and had this definite 
a type of plasma quality to the light that looked like liquid light. And we got about a three or four minute clip of this on video, which amazed us. Wow. And, how close uh, do you think it was? To you how, it was time. probably maybe a quarter mile to a half a mile away at the most. It's pretty, it was wonderful. fairly close. Could you get any and, closer? Were you able to? Uh, no, and then it uh, eventually our tape ran out and we couldn't film it anymore. But then we drove around. That wasn't uh, that was one that was a remarkable sighting. But it wasn't. It was in the beginning of the night of our whole night out there. What we, the sightings that we saw and got. And little did we know what we were in for. About a half hour down the line, we uh, we drove around and uh, we drove around to one of the towns adjacent to Pine Bush. I think it was Walk Hill or Montgomery. Um, so we drove around out there, and all of a sudden I was, well, I was sitting in the passenger side, and all of a sudden I saw something rise out of the field, and it was glittering. Literally, it looked like a glittering diamond with fireworks inside of, of a crystal, and it was all sparkling like fireworks inside of this crystal, and it was some kind of triangular-shaped object. And it was just the most, I just was in shock when I saw this because it, it rose right up out of this farm field, straight up into the night sky, made no sound, and it rose up so fast that we couldn't stop the car and get out and get any kind of video of it. But it was, it was the most shocking sighting I think I've ever seen, and it totally convinced, I, I was totally convinced that what I had seen or saw that night was, um, was alien. How big, how big do you think it was? Just, Estimated. Estimate was hard to estimate, but I'd say maybe 30 feet in diameter. Interesting. But it was shocking. Do you think that they were reacting to you in any way? I mean, do, do, did you get any, I guess, telepathic messages at any point? At this not time? at that, not at this time. This was uh, over 15, 14 years ago now. Not at this time, but I do think that the aliens were aware of us and they decided to give us these two really kind of close sightings that were kind of special because they knew that we believed in them. And from my recent, most recent trips out there, which began again back in, oh, well, just in 2007 now, just a little over a year and a half ago now, um, my re more recent trips have proved demonstrably to me that the aliens are very aware of who I am and have communicated to me and everything, but we can get in that. We can get into that a little bit down the line. I just wanted to remark some more that um, um, what happened that that first night out there was so convincing. This was all the first night. Uh, back in 1993, yeah, when I when I took the trip out there and. That was just totally convincing to me, and I became absolutely persuaded about it. Uh, uh, you know, there's another guy who wrote a book about uh, his investigation into Pine Bush, um, Vinnie Police. Oh yes, he has an, he has one of the fine the, one of the best websites up on. Uh, in fact, I think it's the only sole website up outside of mine. Mine is mine is like kind of a secondary thing. I call it the Pine Bush Zone. That's my website, but it's okay. under a different URL. So if you but if you, if anybody want to, wants to find it, they can just type in on a do a Google search, just type in the Pine Bush Zone, and they will get it. Right, right. Well, it's interesting. A lot of people are going there and having sightings. I mean, it's, so how many in Pine there Bush? People? Yeah, were there other people there? Um, that the first night. Those you? Yeah. No, there was nobody that that night that we knew of. In fact, the activity has kind of quieted down for a lot of people. Like, uh, in fact, I find out the aliens are choosy about whom they're going to give their sightings to and how much they give and how long they give it. For instance, uh, there was a couple that came up from New York, and they interviewed me last uh, fall for a documentary film on my sightings and my contacts. And he had told me, his name is Bill Hassung, from New York City, and he told me that he had one. He went out to Pine Bush to see if he could see anything, because his mother had some kind of UFO sightings years ago around that area. 
but he would he went out six times 